So can you see who's on the screen with you? Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Crystal, do you know my daughter from Fashion Square, the opening of Sephora? Did you two meet then? I was at that opening. Yeah, I went to that opening too. I work there now. Oh my goodness, get out. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I like it there. Yeah, I re knew you were at that opening, and then, like, a, my daughter, that's my youngest daughter, Crystal, Demi. Oh. So, she said maybe you two met before. Yeah, I think so. You look familiar. That's, I want to say your face looks very familiar, so I'm sure, I know we met a lot of people that day. Yeah. So, the reason I wanted to have my daughter, Demi, on here, Crystal, is because she was an obsessed mermaid, a Little Mermaid fan. Like, beyond obsessed and crystal tell her what you do now because i think she's going to absolutely fall in love with it yeah so demi i am actually a mermaid photographer so i have people come and i transform them into mermaids and we do a full photo shoot as mermaids that's so fun i mean I love, that's really cool i know i said you loved mermaids and you love photography right yeah, I and so I really like the, the film photography class. I took like three of them. Like where you go like and you to like the dark room and you develop them and stuff. So I really liked it. So my daughter, Demi Crystal, the, the real, re I mean, she refused to be anything but the mermaid her entire childhood for, I think I discussed that with you on the phone yeah, yeah. Uh, for Halloween. If you look at any of her past photos, any video footage, she, she literally wanted to be the little mermaid. And Demi, she goes to Lake uh, Weechiwachi, right, to do photography. Oh, I, I, we went there when I was a kid. I liked it. Yeah. So I took her there. And we also were thinking about sending Demi and my other daughter there to do a, like a little summer camp where they can learn it and stuff. But Crystal, let's start from the beginning with you. Um, and then we'll talk different stories with my daughter about her loving mermaid stuff and what we went through going to Disney, the first time she met the little mermaid and all that stuff. But Crystal, just tell people how the hell you got into this and, you know, for starters, how did you end up deciding I'm going to be a mermaid photographer? I know. It's so crazy. So um, I was inspired by my daughter. So I am a mom of four. I have four kids and my youngest one is the same thing. She loves mermaids. So for probably a good year, she's almost three now. For a good year of her life, if you asked her her name, she would tell you her name was Mermaid. And if you were like, no, you're Callie, she'd be like, no, my name is Mermaid. So um, I had, gosh, it's been almost two years. I left my full-time job of a very long time to just be a stay-at-home mom. Um, it became very overwhelming. I was managing a store 40 hours a week and then trying to manage home life. And me and my husband had the conversation, like, it's just time to stay home. Mm -hmm. um, so I felt like something was missing. And I always had a love for photography and a love for the ocean. Um, so Callie being in love with mermaids, it was in May. At this point, I had already decided I was going to really do something with my photography. So I started a photography business. And then I came on this search of like, well, what kind of photographer are you going to be? Am I going to do weddings or am I going to do newborns, you know? Right. And um, for her birthday in May, we decided to go down to Wikiwachi Springs to take <laughs> her to see the mermaids. And I know we'll never forget her face. When that curtain went up, she just lit up and you could hear this little two-year-old over the entire crowd saying, mermaid, mermaid, mermaid. Like she was so excited. And to her, they were real. They were real mermaids. She was so excited. And we spent that entire day watching the mermaid show over and over and over. She didn't want to leave. The curtain would fall. She would cry. And then afterwards, they have the mermaids out where you can go and you can meet the mermaids. And she was so excited. She didn't want to leave their side. And I thought, this is the coolest thing ever, right? Like her getting to see the mermaid. And then I had this thought of like, well, what if she could be a mermaid? You know, everywhere she goes, she would dress up in like mermaid clothing, little mermaid outfits and things like that. Sure. Well, down in Wikiwachi, there was this very, very talented man who makes these amazing mermaid tails. And I I've popped in there to say hello, because it was like, well, we're here. Let's, let's go check this out. 
And um, I bought a tail and brought it back to Jacksonville. And I told my husband my crazy idea. And he's so used to all these ideas coming. And I was like, worst case, we have a tail she can grow into. And I came back to Jacksonville. I called my friend and I was like, can I borrow your daughter? Because <laughs> the tail was too big for Callie at the time. And I remember we went on the beach and I had um, I handmade the tops because I knew I wanted the tops to look a certain way. Sure. And as we started doing this photography, she was taking behind the scenes video and my phone just started blowing up that weekend of all these people who were interested without even seeing the finished product. They knew that their daughters were going to want to do this. And at that time, nobody was doing anything like this. Well, are, are you doing photo shoots for Wikiwachi too, or to meet people there, or are you just doing them in Jacksonville, the beaches, or do you go to their house in front of a pool? How does yeah. this work? Yeah, so we actually do it here in Jacksonville, and everything is on the beach. So I do two sessions a day. I do a sunrise session, and then I do a sunset session. Um, so we come out there on the beach and that's, what's great about it. It's not just photos. It's a full experience. Um, so I started, gosh, that weekend we had one tail and two tops that we were working with and it was a whirlwind. And now we've grown, I have 25 tails and I have 20 tops. So when they come, it is all about the mermaid, whether it's a little girl or an adult that we're shooting that day, they come on the beach, they get to pick out their top, they pick out their tail. Um, we have tiaras that they get to pick out. Um, so we really transform them and we make it fun. It's not just uh, let's go sit and say cheese on the beach. Um, for an hour, they feel like they're a mermaid. We go out and uh, we're near the water, and it's so funny because as soon as they get the tail on, they can't help but to start flipping the fins, and it up, they light up. It's so fun to watch. It's really magical, and um, people will stop on the beach. People will stop to watch, and then you've got little kids that are running up, and they want to talk to the mermaid because they think the mermaids are real too. And so, a lot of times, we'll have like the little girls. They'll be waving to people on the beach and stuff. So it's it's something the kids won't stop talking about. So it's great memories. And, and not just that, but we're doing, I do mom and daughter shoots to where we have sure. the mom, they're in the tails and their little girls are there. We create these really beautiful memories that they're going to be able to look back on. Wow. Look at, look at I got this for you. Let's toast. Uh, Demi, she's drinking pina colada. I only have a water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> How much does this cost? So um, that was something that was really important to me is that when I started researching, when I first had this idea, um, there on social media, there's this mermaid and she's just amazing. Her name is Hannah Mermaid. She has this huge following and she offers this like once a year trip to come, you know, be a mermaid, but it's very, very expensive. So that was something that was going to be important to me is I wanted this to be kind of accessible to anybody who wanted to do it, you know, because these little yeah. girls, like it, it's so amazing. So um, and they're not mini sessions. I'm not doing, I know a lot of photographers will have like a theme that they do and they'll do back to back to back sessions. That's not what we're doing. I don't want to rush the girls. Um, so my sessions, even though they stay an hour, sometimes they're longer than an hour. If we have this really dreamy sunset and the kids are really working well with me, we'll shoot until, until we just decide to finish. Like once we're on the clock, we really just don't pay attention to the time. Sure. But, um, but generally I say it's about an hour. And um, the sessions are $250 for that hour, and that includes everything. We're bringing the tails, we're bringing tops, we're bringing props out there. Okay. Um, they're going to get this beautiful gallery that's fully edited, but they're going to get to choose their photos. And then from there, they'll get five photos that are included, mm. and then they can choose if they want to add more photos from there. I gotcha. Are you doing anything commercial wise? So are you doing anything with restaurants or like say anything with uh, SeaWorld hypothetically or anybody else? Or is it just strictly yeah, not, personal? Yeah, yeah, we just, we really just started. So um, I've been really lucky. Pretty much has been, everything has been word of mouth. So last, it was the end of June when we started this. Um, so we ran from June to, I want to say I did sessions through October. You know, the water's, or the water's warm, the weather's warm. So we were able to run pretty long. Um, so it, that was our first go at it. So of course we're hoping to grow into something bigger, but right now a lot of it has just been word of mouth that we're getting out there. So. Demi, you used to go crazy when you seen people, uh, with the fins, right? Like a little bit like, yeah. like a human being. You wanted to do that, didn't you? Yeah, when I was younger, I did. 
for sure. Yeah, when you were younger. Demi, what do you think? Why did you become so obsessed with the mermaid, like as a little girl? How, it seems like people, you know, like Rhea's sister loved the mermaid, and then some other girls gravitate towards different things. What was the one thing that you loved so much about mermaids? I honestly don't know. I was so young. I'm not sure. Because you were saying that I was even like a newborn and I wouldn't go to sleep unless the little mermaid was on and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that mermaids, like, I think that it was kind of cool because it's like underwater and it's like a different experience. It's not like what you see every day, I guess. You know what I mean? And I think too, sometimes the parents, when they love the mermaid, so we, I fell into it with her. And uh, I saw that movie, I think I told you on the phone, like in the 80s, when the movie came out, my cousin went and took his now wife there for a first date. And he said, I'm going to see The Little Mermaid. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know, like, I'm like, you're an idiot. Then he came back and said, it was the most unbelievable musical I ever heard. And I was like, get the hell out of here. And then I saw it and I was like kind of blown away as a teenager myself. So when my dad was, The Little Mermaid was my favorite, still yeah. is my all-time favorite princess. She's just so timeless that when I found out I was having a little girl, you know, the nursery fam, everything was mermaid, everything. And so now it's really cool how timeless it is because Callie will actually sit and she's too. So to see like, you like The Little Mermaid, I loved it, Demi, you loved it. And now my little two-year-old, she'll sit through the whole thing and she loves watching it as well. Yeah, um, we. I also egged my daughter on because her mother looks like the Little Mermaid, right? She was very tall, thin, and we had a photo in San Diego holding her, uh, and it looked like she had a fin, her leg, even though it was her legs. So, and we put it on the refrigerator, and I used to tell her her mom was a mermaid her whole life, like oh, her, whole, her whole childhood, right, Dem? Hmm. I think she believed her mother was the mermaid or a sister to the mermaid. So when Disney opened up um, the, I think it was a ride at Magic Kingdom, the first time she was actually able to go truly see the little mermaid. So we took her there. She was dressed, you know, from head to toe mermaid. And when she saw the mermaid, she looked very similar to her mother. I mean, you know what I mean? Just I, right then. So the, yeah. it was, it was really funny because when she sat down with the little mermaid, to talk to her. She's like, are you my mom's sister? <laughs> and, oh my gosh, I love it. And the girl was like, I don't know. And then she, the mermaid, the little mermaid at Disney saw them, you know, Terry, and you could just tell they looked alike, right? And then we had all the pictures done. So that really kind of catapulted things to the next level. She really, really thought her mom was a mermaid. Um, and we used to argue too, saying who was the best princess, right, Dem? Yeah. So our theory was Milan was the toughest on land, but the Little Mermaid, for one, out of Disney, she was a princess not only in water but on land. She also was the toughest in water. No one can outswim a shark. Uh, you know, like she had all these different things that were so unique, and she could go from land. She could talk to you know, obviously, animals in the sea, and then she could come out and you know, hang out with the humans. So we we love that aspect of both of those things I guess you could say right them yeah for sure yeah what do you uh I was gonna ask you too back to the fin do they get to swim in the water or is it strictly just photos outside yeah so we don't let them swim in them just because um it, it is difficult from what I understand to learn how to swim in these it's completely different than just like open swimming because it is a mono fin so your legs are together Mm -hmm. um, but they do get to get in the water a little bit. So we're not going deep or anything like that. Like we're, it's really, really shallow where we're going just to get some really great pictures. Um, but honestly, I don't think the kids mind. Um, they love when they get to get in the water because we'll start them in the sand and slowly move them back towards the ocean. Sure. And the first time a wave comes and just hits them, their face, like, oh my gosh, it's so funny. They just like light up. And those are usually my favorite pictures of when the waves first hit them. Um, and then there's just splashing nonstop. Like they get so excited just to be in the water and playing around. And that's the thing too. Most of my photos are just raw moments of like the kids playing or they'll find a shell or, you know, I'll hand them a conch shell and tell them like, Hey, call somebody on your shell phone, you know, just silly little jokes like that. We'll sing little mermaid songs together. So it really is just this, this raw moment of like 
I'm a mermaid, you know, I've got mermaids that actually from last season, they're coming back this, this season again, because the moms are like, my daughter has not stopped talking about the time she was a mermaid. She told all her friends she was a mermaid. And now they're going to make it like a yearly thing and just do this progression of their daughters being mermaids. So yeah, really I, cool. that's gotta be unbelievable. I would have definitely had my daughter obviously do that. Do you, because there's a lot of different things regarding mermaids. You have the little mermaid following from Disney, and then there's also those conventions too, correct, that have like where everybody gets together uh, who's obsessed with mermaids, uh, that whole, are you targeting everybody? I, you? There is just this huge, I was unaware that there is this huge mermaid community. Um, so the tails that I use, they are swimmable, um, but some of these mermaids, are in these like silicone tails that can run $5,000 plus for these huge silicone fully swimmable tails. And there are people that are really, really into it. Um, so I do um, keep in touch with some of the mermaid groups and stuff so they know I'm here and they're kind of just spread out all over the place. Um, so there's not really one like target. I feel like it just anybody who loves mermaids is coming out. Um, I've had it's so funny. Adults are always the ones who are a little more like, I don't know. I don't know. Or, um, everybody wants to lose weight before they get in the tail. And I'm like, just get in the tail. <laughs> if you're ready, you don't. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm like, you're fine. You're fine. Just get in the tail. Um, but once they do, they're so happy that they did. So, um, I feel like most of my clients just, they're just beach clients and they just, either love the ocean, love the beach, love mermaids, or most of us, I feel like I was the same way when I was little. I remember swimming in the pool after seeing the little mermaid and pretending I was the little mermaid. You know, that iconic moment where she's up on the rock, you know, yeah. we all did that where we pushed it up on the side of the pool and pretend we were the little mermaid and stuff, so. Do you find more adults hitting you up? Uh, or like, I get that the adults with their kids, but is it, do you think this can kind of go the other way where the future is more adult driven than it is just kids? You know, I think it could be. Um, surprisingly, the the people who make the tales, their yeah. clientele is the majority is adults. It's not kids. So I'm kind sure. of doing the opposite end of the spectrum where right now primarily it is children. Um, I think that now that I've had a few adults do it, I'm definitely having more reach out to me. I've had a couple actually really excited they want to do a maternity shoot and do a picture of them, you know, in the tail pregnant. And then when the baby's born, we're going to do, you know, future pictures with the baby as a mermaid. So that's really exciting. So I do think that the future, I think I'll definitely have more adults wanting to come out and see what this is all about. Um, but right now, the, the good chunk of my clients are definitely children. Yeah. And Disney's coming out with the new mermaid, right? Isn't it? When's that yes. supposed to be? When's that yes. coming out? I don't know when that's going to launch, but I am so excited about that. I don't know if you guys saw the um, the Disney live musical that they did um, no. not too long ago. Oh, you need to watch it. It's so good. I think you can find it on like Disney Plus or something. Okay. But they did like a live version of it, and it was so well done. It was super fun. Um, so I'm even more pumped. They did it this last season because The Little Mermaid just celebrated, I can't, was it her 25th? Yeah, something like that. It was an anniversary for the world. Maybe long. I think it was an 85-ish when it came out. Maybe I'm wrong or in that time frame. Yeah. yeah. And do you think, I just in my opinion, if you were in Orlando, do you think this thing would be just a monster because you obviously have Disney World? My goal is to have people kind of like, you know how you go to Wikiwachi to go yeah. watch the mermaids? I want people to come to Jacksonville to be a mermaid. So that's really my goal. Um, I think a big thing, a difference between like doing it in Orlando and doing it here is that I really want to be on the beach when we do it. Um, the beach is almost like another person in my shoots. Every day is different. I don't know what the water is going to be like that day. I don't know what the sun is going to be like, what the clouds are going to be like. And all of those are like really important elements to the photography. Um, but yeah, my goal is to almost be like a destination where people are like, hey, let's go up to Jacksonville. I heard we can be mermaids up there. So. Wow. Are you doing anything else photography wise or is this, you're strictly just marketing yourself is that, do you do weddings? Do you do anything so else? I, I don't do weddings. 
um, I dabbled in weddings, but I realized I like to talk to people too much. And so weddings was a little bit too behind the scenes for me. Um, so I, I realized children is my niche. I love working mm -hmm. with children. So I do do um, like uh, other children's photography, kind of like what I do with the mermaid's tails. I have dresses, like these big, beautiful dresses um, that I let my clients borrow for the shoots and stuff. And then um, I work a few children's events here in Jacksonville um, for some of the nonprofit organizations. So um, that's Ronald McDonald House. I work with their events and I do event photography for, for their big galas and stuff like that too. I would think even Make a Wish Foundation would reach out to you at times too, right? Because I'm sure a lot of little girls, or if they haven't already, they may. Yeah, I'm so little. Not a lot of people even know that really? Love Let Me exists because we really just started last season. And then, mm -hmm. you know, with COVID-19, that sent everything on a screeching halt for us. Mm -hmm. We were launching during spring break and we got three sessions in and then our beaches shut down. So yes. Yeah, so I'm definitely looking to reach out though to some of those organizations because I would love to do something like that. Do you ever plan on doing like shows? So say there's, say it's Celebration hypothetically, they have a big car show, it's a Make-A-Wish Foundation, setting up not necessarily a booth or but something by a pool where they can come and just, where there's so many kids already, the market's already kind of set up where you can kind of come in for 15 minutes, put the fin on, take a photo and are you transitioning into that? So that was something we were looking into doing this season. Again, everything kind of slowed down with the virus, but we sure. want to do something with, with events. Um, I think that though, the most important thing is that I really don't want to rob the kids of the time they have in the tail. Cause even mm. though it's, it's an hour, they don't want to take the tails off after that hour. They really don't. They're wanting to stay yeah. in there. They're like, can I swim? Can I play? Can I do this? You know, they mm -hmm. just love it. Once they get it on, they don't want to take it off. So, um, but we're, we're definitely going to get out there to do some events in our community. Um, I think that's really important. And um, I really want to work with um, some more things with, with children. Like you were talking about, like the make a wish or something along those lines, I think would be incredible to do. Yeah. And I, you know, she was younger. She had a sleeping bag that was the tail, right? And they love just kind of slipping their legs into there. I would think with you, you can set up a whole different, like a brand beyond even photography, right? I'm saying with your name, because your name, let me get into this. I don't want to screw it up. It's just, is it Love Lumi? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's it. But it's a, yeah. it's, it's mermaid photography, but you can do probably eventually even create maybe a tail someone could swim with or like I just said maybe your own sleeping blanket style or whatever it is there's so many different ways you can go about marketing yeah, I'm very excited. I've had people ask about wanting to buy the tops that I make too even because when I was searching for this I really couldn't find a top it was important to me you know I have four kids I wanted the girls to still be somewhat conservative you know given we're on the beach you know and um because there's little shells on the top and everything like that but they there was nothing out there there was no tops that i could find or everything was just like a bathing suit top or it was a little too revealing for what i was wanting or too flash like way too flashy more something for an adult so to speak so um that's where i just started making my own tops and i started designing them which that was a, pro a learning process as well because that's sure. the other thing everything's getting wet in salt water and salt water will just eat away like destroy all kinds of yeah so I had to learn you know which which blues can I use I'm teaching myself how to sew over here you know late at night making these tops and stuff so um but I love being able to do that because I know how it's going to look in photographs it's going to look the exact way that I want it um so I think there's a lot of different avenues um what we're looking into doing too is eventually traveling to different cities so like you were saying Orlando so maybe having a weekend last season we actually did a weekend in Daytona we were booked solid for the entire weekend yeah. they were there. So that was really great. So um, I think next I'd love to head out to like Dustin, like somewhere in Florida where we got that really pretty. I love it over water. there. Oh yeah. Yes, it's so pretty out there. So I think that's kind of like next on our sites is well, you know, the, the girls that can't come to us, let's go to them and take it there for a weekend and check out some of those other beaches as well. So yeah, and so Demi, I was talking to Rhea and I said, I need you to find me uh, possibly some unique people that you know for my podcast because I didn't want all guys and I wanted everybody from all over the place. And then Rhea mentioned uh, you were one of the top three people and a couple, one that does triathlons, 
um, the girl uh, who lost 170 pounds. Uh, and then you popped up and she goes, I got a girl that's a uh, photographer for mermaids. <laughs> and I said, that's for us. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, I forgot to tell you this. I says, what are you talking about? When I even hear that you're doing this, in my mind, it's almost like it could be a pet. It's like pets, a cat or a dog. I just imagine every video, if you started taking videos, would go viral. Because I couldn't imagine a cute little baby or taking my daughter's. I don't care if they were one, two, four, and they love the mermaid. I would have stuck them right in your photo shoot and, and just videoed it. on. And if I uploaded it on YouTube, my Facebook, Instagram, everybody I can't see not going nuts for it for some reason. Is that the reactions you're getting? Are you getting viral yes. attention? Yes. Um, in fact, that first weekend was almost overwhelming to me how fast it took off because we had planned to launch two weeks later. So. Mm. At that time, I had when I had this crazy idea, my husband's like, okay, let's not go too crazy. So I had to rent my camera lens because there was a special lens I wanted to use that gives a very artistic feel to the photos. Sure. I, I rented the lens. I had one tail. I had two tops. And I had multiple girls. I mean, we're on the beach literally taking off this tail off one kid and popping it on another, like the sibling, because we didn't have two to do them both. Yeah. And since I had, I had the, I remember it was Friday and I had the lens for three days and people were just blowing up my phone without even seeing, like you said, they just saw behind the scenes video. And I was like, well, I have the lens. Let's, let's do this. Why not? You know, yeah. we want to do this. So I remember, Oh gosh, it was so crazy. I had, um, we did a sunset session and then we did sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset, sunrise before I had to take it back. But we're also in between I was still learning about the glue. So I have like the tops are literally falling apart after the sessions with salt water. So we're coming home, gluing tops back together, trying to get everything to dry and then going to do the nighttime session. So we gave it a break for two weeks, edited the photos. And then once I popped those first photos up, it's just been nonstop ever since. I mean, I have people literally traveling from a couple hours away now to come to Jacksonville to do this because they saw it on Facebook and, Pretty much every time I post a photo, you know, the moms just start. I can always tell when the moms put the kids to bed. It's always 9 o'clock at night when my phone starts going ding, 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 ding for the photo shoots, you know. But we just filmed. Um, we were very fortunate because when I tell people about this, they see the photos, but they don't get to see all that behind the scenes, the playing, the kids picking out the tails, like truly the experience that it is, you know, and when people see the price tag and I tell them, you know, it's two fifty for an hour and they're like, well, Susie's doing photos, you know, over here in the sunflower patch for $50. I'm like, you don't understand. It's so much more than photos. So what we did was, um, I hired somebody and we actually made a commercial and I'm, I cannot wait for it to come out. I should have it next month. And that's really going to highlight everything what this experience is from start to finish we filmed both a sunrise and a sunset and two days after doing this was when the beaches shut down so we were I was so fortunate to get to film this commercial because I was like people need to see this they need to see what this looks like from start to finish that's crazy I would almost um think you can almost set a damn booth up at the beach <laughs> <laughs> like anybody who's at the beach at right Daytona, I don't care if you're in Sarasota, I don't care where you'd be at. There's no way I could see anybody walking past you and not wanting to be a part of that. Just just to have something fun. And that's gotta be so rewarding when you put the smiles on these kids' faces. It's just gotta be like at a you know, I always said there's like a lot of different jobs. So a cop or a fireman, I always said you get called in there, it's it's always bad news, right? Yeah. And then you have other jobs like, say, make a wish or something like that where you're actually giving a child something they've always dreamt of. And Let that's me tell you, when you see these little girls light up, I've had little girls, we've met them on the boardwalk, and I'm like, hi, and they're hiding behind their mom, and they're like, I'm sorry, she's shy. I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. And we get down to the beach and they see the tails laid out and they see the tops and their faces, you just see their eyes, they're just like glistening and glittering and they're just so happy. They're smiling from ear to ear and they go in and we have a changing tent on the beach. So they go in the changing tent, they put the top on, they come out. And when we pull up the tail, it is just the <laughs> best moment. And then by the end, this little girl who was hiding behind her mom is like, 
running to give us big giant hugs and thanking us and stuff. It is the best feeling ever. Like I love what I do. Yeah. Um, I'm so lucky that I have just such a, a supportive family. And that's the other thing too. My daughter works with me. So my 14 year old, uh, wow. we learned very quickly that I cannot hold the camera and get these mermaids in position because they can't walk. So, um, <laughs> So that added a whole other element. So um, Madison is my oldest daughter, and um, so we call her Mermaid Madison. And she comes and she scoops the girls up and moves them where I need them to be and stuff. And so it's really fun getting to work with her. We kind of get that that girl time, that bonding time to hang out without the rest of everybody. Um, so it's just been it's been so much fun. Like when I come home, I feel like every single time I'm coming home to tell my husband a story from the photo shoot we just had, and it just doesn't get old. Every time I see the photos and I go to edit, I get so excited. I'm excited to deliver the photos to the clients. You know, it's it's so rewarding. It's I've seen your photos; they're beautiful. I'm going to use one obviously for the cover page for uh, for YouTube. I see some of the uh, tales behind you. Um, are those the ones you? Yeah. And some of the clothing. Yeah, so over here are the tails that we have back here. And then those are the mono fins over there. So we stick the mono fins into whatever tail that they choose. Um, and we're constantly adding colors. So um, the, the seamstress that actually makes these tails, they've converted and they're making face masks right now. So the, the tails have stopped production with everything. Um, but it's pretty cool that they're taking the, the mermaid material and making face masks for everybody. Sure. Um, but once it resumes, I've got more colors coming. Um, we're going to start getting some of those bigger tails, um, not the silicone ones, but they have just really extravagant, really huge tails for the adults. And I think that that's going to be really appealing um, to, to more of the adult clientele once we get those too. You think you'll ever branch out and uh, hire other photographers, say maybe somebody in Hawaii, maybe someone in California, somebody wherever, instead yeah. of you just independently doing it, kind of franchising it to a certain degree? Yeah, I think as this definitely grows, um, it's going to be something that, you know, I would definitely want to bring other people on so they can experience this in different locations. Um, it, it's it's amazing. Like it really is so much fun. So I definitely have want to grow this into more locations in the future for sure. That's, that's genius. Unbelievable. And Demi, you know what else she used to do? What did she used to do? She was a cheerleader for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh really? That's so fun. She was with the roar. <laughs> right? That's the your. Roar. Yes. The roar. Yeah, I told her, I heard about that too, Rhea told me, and I said, well, a lot of my guys watch my podcast. I got to jump into a little bit of the uh, cheerleading stuff here. But yes. before I get too nuts with that, you went from Sephora, right, into directly into this, correct? Yeah, yeah. So that was actually really cool was, um, with Sephora. Like, that was another one of my passions was doing makeup. And so now doing this, I still get to do makeup because I offer – you know, especially the adults, they they want to look perfect in front of the camera and stuff. So I offer them to, you know, if they want their makeup done and everything like that, we can do that. But yeah, I was with Sephora for 12, 12 years, I want to say. And then after Sephora, um, I left Sephora in November. And then that following June is when everything launched with Love Me. Yeah, it's, I'm sure working for Sephora, you learn so much, even obviously with makeup and everything, skincare. That's because my daughter loves Sephora as well, right? That's uh, Sephora, the biggest takeaway and the, that they really taught me is that, you know, like with, with Sephora, for example, people can buy lipstick anywhere, right? And they always came to Sephora for the people. And that was something that was really valuable to me. I, I felt like that was really important. So you know, there's a million photographers out there. The market is very saturated with photographers, but that's something that is, is different about Love Lumi and what we're doing is that it's not just about beautiful pictures. It's that experience. And I'm so thankful for Sephora and everything that they taught me and I was able to grow with that. And that's definitely a piece of me that I've, I've transferred over to my business as well. All right. I'm going to ask you one last question here regarding the mermaid stuff. Do you actually believe in mermaids? <laughs> mermaids are totally real. <laughs> I believe it too. I think we were from the water. I think we were from the water, a lot of us. You have to. You have to. It's just one of those magical, fun things. And, you know, mermaids are so timeless. You know, before the Little Mermaid even existed, you know, the, the stories of pirates and mermaids have been around forever. And I think mermaids will just continue to go on in the stories of mermaids forever. So you've got to love it. 
I, that's, I grew up with Disney just living, coming to Florida from five years old on. But if it, I really think all of us gravitate towards some type of character, if it's Mickey Mouse, Minnie, whoever. But I think when it comes to the mermaid, it's, 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 over, it's massive, I think. And even when I used to take her, say, to the Disney store, I'd literally walk in and go, just get anything you want. Let's just get all mermaid. <laughs> right? It, it, like, it, it, yes. She even had on her wall a big mermaid, like, right, Dem? Every, like a big wall. Yeah, it was like, um, what is it called? It's like you put it over your bed, and then it had, like, drapes that kind of came down that were, like, hmm. sheer. Like but it had, like, your head on it. Huh. It was like, it was like kind of a headboard, but it wasn't a headboard. It goes like a bugger headboard. And then it has like those sheer drapes that come down so that you're able to like enclose yourself. I don't know how to describe it. I love it. Like a canopy over your bed. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it was just her. a smaller version for a kid. Demi, when you're in Jacksonville next time, you need to come be a mermaid once our beaches are fully opened again. Yeah, I'll definitely do it. I don't think I've actually ever been to Jacksonville yet. Okay, you were there. Come up with Rhea and we're going to make you a mermaid, okay? I've been wanting to go to Jacksonville forever because, like, obviously my dad and Rhea have now been together for so long and I still have never been there. And I'm like, I hear it's so pretty at the beaches and it's just like a really nice town. And, like, I have a couple friends who went off to college there and I heard it's really fun. So I want to go. Okay, we're going to make this happen. Yeah, the only time like Demi, she was a baby. Talk about the mermaid. Her grandmother had to go to the uh, Jacksonville Mayo Clinic where your husband works, right? She used to go there. She doesn't remember, and I would take her to the pools and stuff, but they were so young. But I think yeah. they would love, you know, I think they've been, you've been to St. Augustine, right, honey? Have yeah, I yeah. love St. Augustine. Yeah, love so I think that. she'd love it. I love St. Augustine. Demi was so loyal to the mermaid, like sheets, PJs, hoodies, would not wear anything else but mermaid. And I would even challenge her and say, who's more important? Your sister, the little mermaid. <laughs> She'd be like, the little he mermaid. Messed up. He was messed up. I was bad. I'm like, who, I used to do this thing where if you're hanging off a cliff and you have two people, you, you both are hanging on to oh, one of no. And I'm like, you got to let one go. I would literally say, your grandparents. She's like, I'm letting them go. I'm <laughs> like, mermaid. It would always get up to her and her mother or me. She would not commit to saving us she just started crying and run like i didn't i'm like who's more important me or the mermaid she's like don't make me say it don't oh make God. me say it i'm like but it was kind of cute then because we would build up to it all my cousins and even my crazy cousins would be like you know what the little mermaid's got armpit hair i'm gonna tell you right now like as a joke and she'd be like no she doesn't so it was like it was, she took the Little Mermaid so serious. It was just, it's funny in itself. Oh my God. Those are the memories I have with my daughters. I torture them. Um, so let's now, uh, let's jump into, well, so she liked cheerleading when she was little. Both of my daughters started doing cheerleading. The only thing is I didn't like it because they kept making her a flyer, but I knew Jennifer Forster. She didn't know me. She was, like I said, the captain of the uh, Predators, the Magic, and I think it was the USFL cheerleading team. And my father always got season tickets to all the Predators game, and we were across the street. My father had a business right by the arena where the Magic played. So you'd get, you know, the cheerleading calendars or posters with their signatures. So to make a long story short, she did some, I think, an event in Tampa with cheerleading, and then I said, this is over. So Jennifer forced her to open her own academy and I took them there and they really loved her. She had like I, 60, 70 students there for dance. So they spent one summer there and I think they liked it. And then the next summer came rolling around and then I was on the fence. But um, to make a long story short, Jennifer, she hit me up. She's like, Rich, guess what? And I said, what? She goes, I know your daughter loves the little mermaid. And I said, yeah. She goes, we're doing the play of the little mermaid. And I said, Oh my God. So do you remember oh, that Demi? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had to take both of them. They did the play of the little mermaid because they loved it so much. So that was pretty cool. But you now being a Jacksonville Jaguar cheerleader, um, 
how did you ever, how'd you even end up doing that? Were you somebody in college that was doing it? Like I have a cousin that's a college cheerleader, but to go to the next level, that's a whole nother thing. Like what you're doing for dance wise. Yeah. So it was very different. So I remember, um, I was 10 years old. It was back in 95 and that's when Jacksonville first got our team. So the Jaguars came and, you know, they had these cheerleaders that came and they ran a clinic called the junior roar and girls, I want to say it was ages like six to 18 or six to 17 could come and they teach you this routine and you get to perform with the cheerleaders during the halftime show. So my dad signed me up for this clinic. And prior to this, I had never danced or cheered or anything like that. Signed me up for this clinic and I was hooked. To me, these girls were like living Barbie dolls. Like I just looked up to them and admired them and just thought they were so amazing. And then getting to go out on the field during halftime, you know, you, you're this little girl. You feel like everybody's there to see you. They're not there to watch the football game, you know. And um, so when I was 10 years old, I told my dad, I said, when I grow up, I'm going to be a Jaguar cheerleader. And so every year I did that clinic from age 10 to 17. And um, when I was in junior high is when I started dancing. Um, I danced at our school. So I was on the dance team and started doing kind of what you were talking about. We started dancing competitively and I danced all through high school. And um, so it's, it's a little bit different when mm -hmm. with the NFL. So they hold an open trial. You just have to be 18. So um, yeah, when I was 18 years old, I went and tried out and made the team and I was the youngest one. So I was the baby on the team. Wow. Um, I was literally still when they held trials, trials are usually around February ish um, or March. And uh, I was still just getting ready to graduate high school when I had made the team. So um, it was pretty incredible to actually get to be on that flip side. I remember then getting to do the junior roar clinic and I had all the little girls coming up to me wanting my autograph and stuff and it was just so exciting and oh man game day there is nothing like being a cheerleader on the field on game day in in the stadium right before they go out the cheerleaders I'll never forget this were in the tunnels and when you're in the tunnels right there's all these motivational quotes like up on the walls before you hit the field and we're there and the players are behind us and you can hear them getting hyped and they're getting ready and they can hear the fan and you run out and we make the tunnel for the players for them to do their intro and it is just electric the energy the fans i remember they would do the national anthem and we're all standing there and the, the flyover the jets would fly over the stadium and we would just get goosebumps like there is just there's nothing like it yeah, that stadium's awesome as well. I've been to that stadium, and I love that they have, what are their pools on both sides? You could go swimming for certain events. Yeah. And I would think Jacksonville would be a good place to cheer. You're not freezing your ass off like a lot of other football teams, right? Like outside. <laughs> yeah, it's on the flip side. You're sweating your ass off, right? Not exactly. It is so hot down there, and when you're on the field, there's really not, there's not a breeze down there, so it is really really hot down there and there's a lot happening on the field um it's it's something else let me tell you i'll, I'll gosh i'll never forget too um we, we do this intro and um so they would introduce the roar of the jaguars and we come out and we do our routine and we do this kick line and so we're hooked up with each other and you know we're in our little tops and stuff and we did this right before we connected to start kicking I did my little head pop and my, the top, the little button goes pink and it didn't fall all the way off. But sure enough, I look out the corner of my eye and the cameraman is right there and has me on the jumbotron. And the girls next to me are like, just keep going, keep going. So we did our routine and stuff. But that was just one of those moments that I'll just never forget. The rest of the game, all the fans were like, yeah, you know, it's so crazy. Crystal, did you do the type of cheerleading um, where like, I have two different types of cheerleading cousins, actually. It's actually was my cousin Donna, and she did dance throughout her life and then went to, a, I think it was Western University in uh, Illinois and did cheerleading for football. And then her son went on to become a cheerleader in college. He's the guy who lifts the girls at a major university. I actually just did a podcast with him. Were you involved with more dance or were you involved with like, say the show cheer that's on Netflix where it's a lot more extreme? Yeah. So I'm actually 
actually never cheered. So even though we're NFL cheerleaders, a majority of the team is actually has a dance background. So leading up to that, everything I had done is dance. You'll see a couple of the girls will tumble and stuff like that. But if you really watch, all the routines are dance routines that the girls are doing on the right. sidelines and when we hit the halftime. So my entire background is dance and a good majority of the girls that are on the team, their background is all in dance. Gotcha. Would you want your daughter, say, to do, because Rhea's uh, niece is involved with the cheerleading where, uh, you know, the traveling and that extreme cheerleading, as you know, where they're launching each other, it seems like, in the ears and all that. Would you, what do you think about that? Because the injuries are off the chart. Would you like them to get involved with something like that? Because I always kind of felt bad I pulled my kids off cheerleading because there was two elements. Like I said, there was the one where they were holding her and doing pyramids. And then when I went to Jennifer's Academy, which I, she's wonderful, she seemed more dance orientated. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you think about that? It's, it's really hard. Cause I will say I had always wished that I knew how to tumble. Like when I could see the girls tumbling across the field, I always wish I could do that. But like you said, the injuries, um, Callie is actually in dance right now. So mm -hmm. she's two years old and in dance. Um, and for right now, I think that's the track. I feel like too with dance, once you get past the college level, there's really not a lot out there that yeah. you can do with, with the cheer and the tumble. Whereas I feel like dance definitely, there's so many different avenues that that can yeah. take them and stuff. So I feel like having a really good solid dance background pays off more in the long run. And then, like you said, there's just not as many injuries. There's so much risk with, with the cheer aspect. And once they get into tumbling and stuff, especially when they're, they're younger, you know, when they're little. So for now, we're definitely going to stick more with the dance. Um, last year was our 25th anniversary of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So they invited all the alumni back to celebrate us, um, both cheerleaders and players. Um, so last year, uh, I remember Callie, she was so excited. She dressed up in her little Jaguar cheerleader outfit too. And she had her little pom-poms. She calls them Jaguars. Um, she loves going to the game. So she'll dance like the whole time at, when we're at the games and stuff. So Definitely, I'm not going to push her into anything, but for right now, she's loving dance, so that's going to be the path that we take for her. Yeah, our cousin Luke, he did the high school, college, got the scholarship, actually. He, I just, and he works at Orange Theory now. What was interesting with him is he says now, just in the last X amount of years, how competitive it is regarding so many more men now getting into cheerleading and how much more extreme it's become. Uh, and then afterwards, obviously, college, you, you know, for them guys, there's nowhere else to really go, not even the NFL, right? Or, yeah, you know, for women, at least, maybe you can kind of parlay it into different things. So let's, uh, we're going to wrap up here. And Demi, I just screwed this up. When you think sl uh, slingshot, what do you think, Demi? The ride. That's, <laughs> <laughs> my, she's the one who loves who wanted to always go on the slingshot. We used to have one on I drive in Orlando where it, like three or four people could sit on this thing and it slingshots you into the air. Uh -huh. We never did it. I don't know why we did everything else, but Demi, her husband and her run another company. Do you know what a slingshot kind of motor vehicle looks like? Not a vehicle. Yeah. So you want to kind of explain it to me and her. I, I know what it is because my father's friend has one now that you said it. And we got a guy locally who I said, me and Rhea laughed, who blast tunes out of it. Are those first, are they two or three seaters or kind of tell them? Yeah. Where. So it's the Polaris slingshots. Um, so we own seaside slingshots as well. So while Mermaids are amazing. My husband wanted something to do as well with the business side of things. So we brought, we're bringing slingshots to Jacksonville. So um, a slingshot, it's, it's considered an auto cycle, but it's the, it's the motorcycles you see that have the two wheels in the front and then the one single wheel in the back. Mm -hmm. um, there's two seaters. So um, that was kind of our stress relief. You know, leave the kids. Sorry, kids. It's only two seats. You know, mom and dad are going for a cruise. Um, but they are so much fun. You don't yeah. have to have a motorcycle license to drive them, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, and so you just, they're all the models that we have are not, um, automatic. They just launched the new automatics this year, just a couple months ago, actually the automatics, but, um, that's what I've been doing the past two weeks is learning how to drive a manual. But yeah, we have these slingshots here in Jacksonville and we yeah. run them out. People can take them for a day, for a weekend, for a week and enjoy them. 
Do people wear helmets? Because I never see them wearing a helmet with them. Do they? Some? Um, it's optional if you're over 21. So you do not have to have helmets if you're over 21. We have helmets that we provide to our guests if they'd like to wear them. They're, they're more than welcome to, obviously, for safety reasons. Um, I will say when I get on the interstate, I prefer to wear a helmet on the interstate just because we're going so fast. Sure. Um, but usually when we're cruising around the beach and stuff, I, I don't wear a helmet or around the beach, but um, it's, it's optional if you're over 21. How about, you know, that's the reverse of the three-wheeler. Because in the old days, mm -hmm. they had the front wheel on the front and the two in the back, but they kept flipping and having all these issues. People getting injured, then they kind of went to the four wheel. That's kind of a reverse. Do those tip or flip? Are they, or are they very secure? Yeah, they're super stable. So honestly, it's like driving a car. Um, they're really, really mm -hmm. stable. They don't tip easy or anything like that. So you really don't have to, yeah. you have to be doing something really crazy. Yeah, this is what she read. Look, Dem, this is what she... Are these cool? Oh, those are so cool. Yeah, it's like you get to enjoy a motorcycle experience without yeah. having uh, to worry about, you know, dumping your bike or somebody. If you even get hit, at least there's a frame around you. Exactly, exactly. Right? They're quick. They're quick. They're fun. You can Thanks have Robert. your music blasting in them and stuff. I mean, they're a good time, and not a lot of people have seen them or got to experience them, and we had rented them somewhere and we had so much fun and we we're like, man, we'd love to do rent one in Jacksonville and it wasn't here. There was nothing. And we're, so we, we decided we did it and we brought it to Jacksonville. So we just launched that in February and everyone's really enjoying it. Even with the virus going on, people, that's their way to kind of get out when they're going stir crazy in the house, go out, go for a drive for a little while. It's like a modern age dune buggy to a certain yeah. degree. Yeah. I re uh, the first time I saw those slingshots was in South Florida because a lot of people were driving those near the beach, right? Maybe even uh, maybe Cocoa or somewhere. But I remember first seeing those, and I think they're depending on the level you get, they're pretty affordable too, like compared to a motorcycle, right? And I think they're yeah. less insurance too. I think if you have one of those compared to a motorcycle as well, the insurance gets a little tricky. So that's where you really run into it. Uh, with the insurance, not everyone's uh, willing to insure them. Um, so that can get a little tricky at times with the insurance. Um, but um, they're not they're not too outrageous with the price. It's almost like owning a car. It's going to be like buying a car when you buy one. Um, yeah. But it, you you yeah, see them used. Fun. You see them used for like eight, ten grand all over the place. It's it's. Yeah. Right, and you're like, oh my god, I would not use one. Yeah, the two that we have are limited edition ones, so they were a little more. Um, mine is lime green, so I like the flashy, like bright colors and stuff. Um, so we have like a his and hers. So me and my husband will take them out together, and oh, we got the lights underneath, so at nighttime you can pick your color and they glow, and oh, it's so fun. It's so interesting when you said slingshot. For some reason, I automatically went to the other thing, but I go to a lot of car shows with my father, or just in North America in general. And a lot of times they'll have slingshots there. Like dudes are just pulling in, you know, just to check out the car show if it's West coast. Um, I think I once ran into a dude with slingshot. I think you can have one made to your specific, uh, specifically for you kind of right. You could pick the color, the style, like kind of like a car. Am I right about that? Cause he, he, he had a flyer up and he was talking to us about it. Cause my dad loves motorcycles and he was honestly, I think considering maybe getting one. You can completely customize these things. So yeah. um, some of our friends we know that have them, it is incredible what they have done to them after the fact. And um, I mean, basically, if you can dream it, you can do it. everything from the paint to the lights. I mean, it's really, it's a really fun, fun toy that you can customize. You guys got to be the coolest, like, parents <laughs> to hang out with in Jacksonville, right? If you got Stop daughters, it. Stop it. School and the slingshots. Our kids are constantly fighting over who's going to take them to school so they can get dropped off in the slingshot. I mean, between the mermaid lifestyle, my mom was a cheerleader for the Jacksonville Jaguars, to the slingshots, the whole thing's got to be unbelievable. Your husband works at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, which is an incredible hospital. Amazing. Yeah, because our... Uh, her grandmother, we spent a lot of time in Jacksonville going back and forth. That was her, one of our main hospitals. What's he do there by any chance? Yeah, so he works in interventional radiology there. So basically okay. if somebody's having 
um, a stroke or a heart attack. He's there assisting the doctors while they're putting tubes in. Um, he's starting to do a lot with the neuro unit where they're working with the brain and stuff. Um, very long cases, long days. Um, you know, yeah. just last night he was called in. He gets called in at two o'clock in the morning. You know, somebody's got an emergency and he's got to go. And sometimes he's not home for six, seven, eight hours, however long it takes. But Mayo is just incredible. The way they take care of their patients and their staff is just second to none. It's just yes. unbelievable. So with him working in the medical field, it's a very high stress job as you can imagine. Sure. Um, so this is our outlet, you know, the slingshots and we're a beach family. So he surfs, my kids surf, I try to surf. Um, we go to Costa Rica, which actually just came back from Costa Rica. Um, so we go down there to go surfing and kind of slow down time a little bit and awesome. really enjoy everything. So, you know, the, the beach and, and this, that, like I said, that's kind of our getaway from like the everyday stresses of life. Mm. Demi, does that sound like the life for you? What she's kind of yeah, leading? That's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> she loves the beach. Yeah, you two have a lot in common as far as loving the beach. She loves Sephora. You know what I mean? She likes I uh, she to like to dance. And she liked mermaids. Uh, it's funny. That's why I had I had to have you on here, Demi. Yeah. Did you like the podcast? Yeah. Was it interesting? Yeah, it's very interesting. You got any questions for Crystal, or did I cover everything? You asked a lot of questions. I think you covered everything. I am a pain in the ass with the questions, but thank <laughs> yeah. you, Crystal, for being on this. It's I think a lot of people are going to dig this. Thank you for having me. Oh, no, this is awesome. Um, yeah, that's really all I got for you. I don't want to keep asking you questions. I'm probably driving you crazy. Good. Wow. Demi, we've got to get you to Jacksonville between the slingshots and becoming a mermaid. Girl, you got to get up here. Yeah, I'll do it. I'm so down. Yeah. Awesome. She's got to go next time we go visit Rhea's parents. Yes. Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because uh, And there's a lot of stuff to do in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. so I think she'd love it there. And it's a... So if there's a beach, I'm there. So. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it's a different style of beach than maybe the ones you usually go to, Demi. They're a lot quieter, wouldn't you say? They're not as busy. Usually yeah, yeah, our beaches are pretty quiet. I mean, I haven't been to, I've only been to the ones way down South Florida, which I know get very busy. But Demi, have you ever tried like surfing or anything? No, I am the clumsiest, most uncoordinated person. And I <laughs> just fall right off. We'll get you on a paddle board then. We have the paddle boards that we take out to the beach and you can totally do that. That's a lot of fun too. Yeah, I wish I could do something like surf, but I would just fall off before I could even stand. And so <laughs> Yeah, and you're the only beach open right now, right? In the state of Florida? Or am I making a mistake? No, I believe right now we are. I've heard that there's gonna be some other beaches that are opening up, I believe, on Monday. So we were the first ones to open. A lot of counties are kind of following suit. Um, of course, we made national news. Everybody was talking about Jacksonville stormed the beaches, and it was so crazy. And we mm -hmm. live 10 minutes from the beach, and that's – we go to the beach several times a week at least. Um, so my kids were waiting for this moment for the beaches to open, but I had heard such mixed things on Facebook, both between the news and locals that live here. So I decided, you know, I'm going to go out there and see for myself, and it was nothing like the media was making it out to be at all. Um, yeah. either way I looked, there was like 15 people on the beach this way, 15 people on the beach this way. And most of the people honestly were in the water surfing or paddle boarding. Um, everybody that was on the beach was following the regulations. Like yeah. it was nothing like they made it out to be. So the, I'm thankful the beaches are open. I feel like it's a step in the right direction, especially a step in the right direction to get love Lumi up and going again with yeah. our mermaid session. So For it was sure. just really nice to see. It felt so good to be on the sand, be near the water, get some fresh air, kind of escape everything that's happening in the world right now, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. All right. You want to tell them where they could find you? Yes. You can find me at, um, find me at Love Lumi Photography on Facebook and Instagram. And then my website is www.love-lumi.com. Awesome. All right, that's it. We're going to wrap up. Thank you both for being on the podcast today. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> All right. Well, take care, and I'll, uh, I'll obviously hit you up regarding this. We'll put some stuff together, and I'll let you know when I'm going to post it. And before I post it, I'll let you know everything I'm going to write up. And if you want, send me your bio and all your links because I want to include that as well.
Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You look like a million bucks over there. I'm ready to go, go check out that room right there. That looks like my daughter's room years ago with all the clothes everywhere. And just, it's a it's throwback. Like a really good lighting in here too. So everybody could see. Yeah. And you're the shirt you're wearing or the blood. Uh, it looks perfect. It's a perfect match. Everything. <laughs> I'm over here. I was like, oh, I didn't know this was like important. And I'm just like in my bed. And I was like, Oops. No, I like it. Because he didn't tell me at all what was going on. He was just like, get on this call. And I was like, okay. Oh, my gosh. I love it. So this is the complete surprise to you as well. Then, yeah, like, huh? I had no idea what was going on. I was just oh, like, that's okay, so cool. I'm doing. That's awesome. Well, my you look beautiful, so. What do you say? You look beautiful. Oh, you thank you. It. So do you. <laughs> I would have worn my mermaid shirt, but I wore it out, I guess. We had a I, Demi, I got to get a new one. Yeah. So. I did buy him one like two years ago from Target. And he wears I love it. it. I wore it out. <laughs> a grown ass man walking around the mermaid. But I'll tell you something more people came up to me wearing the mermaid shirt than Eddie before. Even parents, like, you know, your little right. kids would have come up to me. We go to Disney Springs all the time, and we go to Epcot, and I wear it all the time. But I usually wear Slinky because I love Toy Story. But when I would wear the Little Mermaid, because you don't see many, I guess, straight dudes wearing a Little Mermaid shirt. <laughs> so, you got to rock it. You got to rock it. Yeah, they'd come up to me, and the little kids would ask me, you know what I mean, where'd you get there? Even mothers, uh, just women in general, where'd you get that shirt? Is that a girl's shirt or is it a dude's shirt? I'm like, I don't know. My daughter got it at Target. I just wear it. <laughs> And it was kind of a bigger shirt because I'm not the smallest guy. So it kind of looks like, you know, it's an XL mermaid with her big face. <laughs> I love it. All right. All right. I'll talk to you two later. Bye. Bye. All right. Take Bye. care. Thanks again.